thank everyone for being here today. The Lord would request for us to worship him in spirit and in truth on the first day of the week. Yeah. We're so happy to be able to do that. Amen. So glad that we are above ground. Amen. And you know, any day above ground is a good day. Yeah. <laughs> we're grateful for that. Yeah. If you're visiting with us, we're so happy to have you. Good to see you, Mr. Collins. Good to see you. I miss you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we won't hold you long. I want to talk about the scripture that was read in our hearing. In 1 Samuel 10, 19, this is what they said. And you have this day rejected your God, whom himself saved you out of all of your adversaries and your tribulations. And you have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now, therefore, present yourself before the Lord by your tribes, by your thousands. They wanted a king. Mm -hmm. They wanted a king to be over them and ruling them. Yes. But had not God brought them out of the land of Egypt? Mm -hmm. and, and didn't God bring them through the uh, through the wilderness and fed them quail and, and brought water from the rock and yes. rained down manna? I mean, yes. had not God taken care of them? Yes. Why would they want another king? You know, sometimes that's where we are, right? Yeah. <laughs> we want another king. We want to have that uh that house or that car or whatever it is, we have a, a, a kingdom that is something else. And so they wanted another king. And this is what God told them. Okay, you want another king? Let me tell you what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Psalms, I mean, 1 Samuel 8, 11. <laughs> These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. Right. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. You ever seen people run before uh, the chariot, even with the president? You know, sometimes when the cars of the president is driving, they have men running before the car. He said, this is what your king is going to do to you. He says, and he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and, he, and to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariot. They're gonna, he's going to work it. He will take your daughters to be perfumers, and cooks, and bakers. He will take your best of your fields and your vineyards and your olive orchards, and he will give them to his servants. Mm -hmm. He will take the tenth of your grain of your vineyards and will give it to his officers and his servants. What decision do you think they would make after that? You know, John's telling you, okay, you want a king, I'm going to give you a king, but this is how the king's going to treat you. You think they would say, okay, no, we don't want a king. <laughs> but in 1 Samuel 8, verse 18, brother, which, what did they say? And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, All right. which ye shall choose, which, which, which have chosen you. Uh -huh. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Right. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey mm -hmm. the voice of Samuel. And they said, nay, but we will have a king. Now, God over. said, now, you're going to cry out. <laughs> and I'm not even going to listen to you. They say, no, but we still want a king. Right. So today, guess what I want to talk about? I'm going to talk about an informed decision. Informed. You got to think about things before you make a decision. Right. You got to get all the information, get all the characteristics. You want to make sure you collect all the data. If you're going to have a medical procedure, you want to know everything about that doctor. Right. If you want to invest your money, you want to know where it's going, brother Tom. You want to make an informed decision. Now, some decisions, you know, you know, what major you're going to do, you can always change the major. I think Chad changed his one or two or three or four or five times. <laughs> but you can always do that. Or, you know, some decisions you make when it comes down to, to a job. You can take a job one, and if you don't like the job, you go get another job. Or if you're buying a house, if you, if, you, if you seem like you don't like the house, you can always sell that house and get another house. But some decisions you make are permanent. Yeah. You can't go to the military and then they run you two or three days and you say, no, nah, I thought it was going to be all right for me. But I want to change my mind. Yeah. And so that's what I want to talk about today, making an informed decision. Right. Well, the first decision I want you to be aware of is becoming a Christian. Got to know now. God expects something of you. Yeah, right. We want everybody to be a Christian, yeah, yeah. but we want you to make an informed decision. Yeah. You know the Bible is clear that in Luke 14 and verse 27, Luke 14 verse 27, He tells us that we're going to have to count the cost. Right. 
You ever went to buy something and you didn't know if you had enough money? If you didn't have enough money, you know what? You don't need to go down and mess with those people. Uh, right. You only go to get something unless you have the money to buy. True, true. And in Luke 14 and verse 27, what did he say there, brother? And whosoever does not bear his cross mm -hmm. and come after me and not be my disciple. Right. For which of you intend me to build a tower, sit not down first and count up the cost. Now, if you want to build a house, you got to know that you have your finances in order or that you have enough money in your pocket like Brother Williams just built it. You know, <laughs> you want to make sure you have enough. You don't go to start building unless you count the cost. Becoming a Christian, you need to count the cost. God wants everybody. Right. But God wants you to know what you're in for. All right, go ahead, brother. Whether he has sufficient to finish it, mm -hmm. less happily after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, mm -hmm. all that we hold it begin to mock right. it. Right. Now, you ever seen uh, foundations? You go someplace and you see them. They've been there for four or five years. Yeah. They started to build, but they didn't finish it. Right. You know what they used to tell you? You know what your parents used to tell you when you get ready to go to college? Mm -hmm. If you don't plan on finishing it, don't, go. don't start. That's the way it is with God. You can't play with God. Right. Now, we want you to be a, a Christian. We're not trying to chase you off. We just want you to make an informed decision. And it goes on. You know what he said in Hebrews 10, 25? Not forsaking the assemblies of yourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And as much as you see the day, see the days approaching. For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, and re there remaineth no for a sacrifice of sin. What he said is you can't play with God. Right. I want you to know that. He said, we, not, it said that we, we, when we come together, we exhort one another. Everybody come to church to get something. You, you might come in and you might look nice. You might be wearing nice clothes. You might, but all of us have problems and you want to tell the truth. We all have problems. Amen. And when we come to church, we come to encourage one another, yeah. to build one another. I didn't put this together. God did. Yeah. That's how he wants us to get strong and strong. Yeah. Brother Thomas always mentioned that in his prayer, yeah. Yeah. that we, we take something out of here if it's just one word or one sentence or something. But you got to kill something to get something. All right. Yeah. All right. You need to go to your uh, brother and sister and say, how you doing, brother? Is everything okay? <coughs> you need to encourage them. Right. They need to encourage because you know what? As soon as we walk through those doors, people are trying to knock us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we need to be together and be supportive of one another. Mm -hmm. He said, now, but don't play with that. Right. He says, because he says, he says, well, if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice of sin. But a certain fearful looking of, for judgment and fiery indignation of your adversaries. He said, you can't play around now. He goes on to say, verse 28, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Amen. How much more, how much soul punishment suppose you, he that thought work, who he be thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the Son of God. Right. You know, God came, Jesus came to put everything down. Right. Everything is going to be put under his foot. Mm -hmm. But what about us who put him under our foot? Right. Mm -hmm. How do you think that's going to be? What I'm trying to tell you is that you got to make an informed decision. Right. When you become a Christian, it's not a game. It's a serious thing. Amen. But preacher, I don't tell them all that. Preacher, we don't want them to know. Yeah, you do want them to know. Yeah, yeah. Because you want them to not walk in here, just get baptized and walk out and think it's no big deal. It is a big deal. Right. We want you now. Don't get me wrong with that. You think I'm a Christian. But we want to give you the truth. He says, it says, and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith we are sanctified as, un as an unholy thing and have done and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. What I'm trying to say is that we can't play with this. God wants us what he wants us to understand. He wants us to count the cost. And so many people say, well, preacher, if they just know that Jesus is the son of God, that's all that matters. No, you need to know a little more than that. Yes, mm -hmm. You need to know that God holds you accountable for everything. And in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4, brother. Hebrews 6, 4, what does he say there? For it is impossible for those who have once 
and my, who were once enlightened mm -hmm. and have tasted of the heavenly gift mm -hmm. and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and have tasted the good word of God mm -hmm. and have and the power of the world to come. Mm -hmm. If they shall fall away to refuse them again unto repentance. There's not another gospel. See, they already have, they've already heard the gospel, mm -hmm. so they, there's nothing else you could tell them. You ever talk to somebody and they knew everything? Uh -huh. Before you get ready, oh yeah, I know that. Well, if you knew it, you would be doing it. People leave the church and they say, well, I haven't left, I, I haven't left Jesus. I left the church, but I haven't left Jesus. If you leave the church, you love Jesus. Uh -huh. And it's impossible for us to renew you because your head's so hard and you've already heard the gospel. What I'm saying is you don't play with God. Come on. We want you to be a Christian. We want you to come on board. But I want to tell you the truth. We want you to make an informed decision. Amen. He says, if, but if they shall fall away and renew again unto repentance, sin, that they crucify the Son of God. It's like you crucify Jesus all over again. Amen. And you know what's right. We've had people to walk out of here and, and went into other religions, and they notice there's no such religion. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. It's hard. It's hard when you deal with people like that. And I want you to know what's right now. In Revelation 2, verse 10, brother. Revelation 2, 10. I'm missing something here. Uh, brother Williams, let's go, let's go to 2 Peter 2.20. 2 Peter 2.20. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world. Now you become a Christian. I mean, that's a fancy way of saying after you have become a Christian. Okay. Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. They are again entangled there in the Lord to come. Now the you're going right back into the world and get back into that stuff. Mm -hmm. What did he say? The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. How can the latter end be worse than the beginning? Because you didn't make an informed decision. Right. Preach, don't tell them that. No, you don't want me to tell them the truth. <laughs> We want you to understand that this is not something to play with. Sin is so sin is so easy to get in and it's so hard to get out. Yeah, right. It's like eating Lay's potato chips. You just eat one. <laughs> you won't eat another. You won't eat another. That's the way sin is. Brothers and sisters who will walk out of here, it's hard to get them back. Yeah. Yeah. Because they think it's a they think it's a game. They think I can just come back in. The Bible says the latter end mm -hmm. is worse than the first end. You know why? Because they didn't make an informed decision. And the Bible says you have to count the cost. This is nothing to play with. You know you never played with your mama, did you? <laughs> you never played with your daddy, did you, brother Joe? <laughs> Some people you know you don't play with. You don't play with God. We want you. Now, don't get me wrong. I know this sermon sounds like we don't want Christians. We want Christians. We just want you to know what you're in for. Yeah. God loves you and God wants you because your reward is greater in heaven. Amen. And you keep going around here and you think you're going to find something, you're never going to find it. Amen. You know, you think, well, the, the next job, I'm going I'm to have all the happiness I want. Or the next president is going to make us all happy. Or the next car, or the next, whatever the next is, is going to make you happy. And guess what happens? It never does. Amen. You got to keep your eye on Jesus. All I'm saying is we want you to be a Christian, but you got to realize that it's, a, it's, a, it's not a game. He said the latter, keep it, what you say there, brother? What verse are you in there? Second Peter oh, chapter verse, 2, verse what? Verse 21. Okay. For well, it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> it would have been better for you not to even know it. And people say, well, preacher, I don't think you need to tell them that. No, I do need to tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I want you to make an informed decision. If you want to play with God, that's your business. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to get hurt. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, God expects us to be here. God expects us to worship him. God expects us to, because you know what? We worship when we, we, we work while we're alive, because when we're dead, we can't work in any work. We do the work now. Right. When the last time you invited somebody to church? I mean, just tell me, just tell me the truth. When is the last time you invited one person to church, right. or a Bible class, or a Bible study? Don't play with God. Yes, he said the latter end worse is worse than the first, yes. and that's what I'm trying to tell you. I want you to make an informed decision. That's all right. 
This is something you can't play with. So he said in Revelation 2.10, he says there, he says, well, be, be thou faithful as long as you can. No. <laughs> be, thou, be thou faithful for five years. It says, be thou faithful to death, and then you shall receive a crown of life. That's what it says. And Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Hebrews 12 and 1. Brother, what does he say there? Wherefore, see, we are also com are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Mm -hmm. uh, let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us. Right. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. See, we are running the race. I don't have to beat you. And you don't have to beat me. Yeah. You just got to finish the race. Right. Just keep going. Keep going to the end. Don't let them know that devil's going to try to trip you up. Yeah. That devil's going to say, well, no, you don't need to be there. You know the Dolphins playing today. You know we're the number one in our division. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the devil will say all this other kind of stuff. It's, it's so many reasons for you not to be here. Yes. But God said you just finish the race. That's what you got to do. You just got to finish the race. Right. What else he say, bro? Looking unto Jesus, uh -huh. the author and finisher of our faith. Right. Who, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, yeah. despising the shame, uh -huh. and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Just keep your eye on Jesus. Amen. And somebody said, well, picture this. I know I'm not going to be perfect. I want to be a Christian. I want to be baptized into Christ. And I know that you're telling me it's not a game. This is a serious business. But I already know that I'm going to make a mistake. I already know that I'm not perfect. Well, let me tell you this. None of us in here are perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and if you say you're perfect, you know you're lying. Yeah. But God has made provisions for that. And the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there had no temptation taken unto you such as in is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able. God, is, God knows what you're able to handle. Amen. God knows that you that you can do only deal with so much stuff. You ever ask God? I remember one time I asked God just to let my life be normal. Yeah. I was going through so much stuff. I said, God, just let me have a normal, normal life. But if we just stay where we are, we're never going to grow, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't go through something, you're not going to get anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. There has to be some adversities. There has to be some ups and downs in life for you to stretch, for you to grow. If everything was all right, you wouldn't be sitting here. Right. If you had everything you ever wanted, you wouldn't even care about God. The reason we go through these ups and downs is so you and I can grow. But he's not going to give you more than you can handle. But you already know that there's going to be some problems. But so does God. All you have to do is just get up, brush yourself off, and keep running the race. But don't play with God now. This is not a game. You know what he said in 1 John 1, 7? But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all of our sins. You just keep going and say, just keep going. I know it's going to be some problems. You know, uh, one, one, the coach family going through something, everybody in here going through something. Amen. But we just got to keep going. Amen. Because if you finish the race, you win. Yeah. You don't have to beat me. You don't have to talk about me. I don't have to talk about you. Somebody's always saying, well, I'm better than that person. You don't need to be better than just need to do what God tell you to do. Amen. But he said, if you walk in the light as he's in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all of our sins. Right. All of them. Yeah. But we got to just keep on going, Brother Thomas. We can't stop. Right. And you know the devil's at you. The devil, sometimes the devil's in your own household. Yes, he you go to that job on Monday morning, the devil meets you there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the devil gets you on the highway on the way to the job. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you is that we cannot give up because we want to we wanna make sure that we have to make an informed decision. All right. That's what it's all about. Not only that, when it comes to marriage, I want you to make an informed decision. People take marriage like it's nothing. Oh, I get married four, five, ten times. I don't know God doesn't play that. You ever see married at first sight? They got this show on, right? You don't know. You never met the person. 
And you make a curtain drop now, and you decide right there if you want to marry that gal or not. <laughs> and then, and then they get you like a divorce is nothing. They think it's nothing. But I want you to make an informed decision. Because the Bible said in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 2. Ecclesiastes 5 and 2. What does he say there, brother? Be not rash with thy mouth. Uh huh. And let not thine heart be hasty mm -hmm. to utter anything before God. God said, Now you be careful what you say. You make a oh, I, 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 I love you till death do me part. <coughs> uh, uh, for rich or poor, for sickness and in hell. And as soon as she stomp her toe, you're ready to get rid of her. <laughs> no. You, the Bible says you got to be careful with those, right. oh, those uh, harsh. Uh, Things that you say out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me tell you one thing about God. I'm going to tell you something God hates. We all want to know what God loves, but let me tell you today what God hates. Yes, sir. The Bible said in Malachi 2.14, because the Lord has been a witness between you and your wife of your youth. Now we're not talking about the fifth, sixth, seventh one. We're talking about the wife and your youth, the first one, whom thou hast dealt treacherously, Though she was your companion and your wife by covenant, mm -hmm. but not one has but but not one has done so who has a remnant of the spirit. And what did that one do while he was seeking a godly offspring? Take heed then to your spirit that let none of you deal treacherously against the wife of your youth, for I hate divorce. If you don't plan on staying in there, don't, don't bother them. Right. If you don't plan on sticking around, don't bother them. Because there's always going to be something coming up. Right. There's always going to be a problem. God doesn't want you running right out. I'm trying to give you, make, help you make an informed decision. Because there's some things God hates. And God hates divorce. Yeah. You know what he said in, in Proverbs 6, 16? Six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look. Yes. You know what a proud look is? Like you better than something. You ever had somebody walk by you like this? Yes. <laughs> walk with their nose, their nose in the air like they're better than you. Mm. A proud look. Yeah. Uh, 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 where am I? A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. Yes, a heart that devises wicked imagination. You ever had somebody that always trying to come up with something wicked? They always trying to come up with something evil. I remember when one guy told me, he said, he said, look, we can we can break down women and we can get what's in there. All you gotta do is man, you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, said, he said, you know the look that you know how they sell things on the floor that they turn and put the money down in there. He said, all you gotta do is put your hand down there. <laughs> you know that money so far down there, you really <laughs> But it's always people trying to come up with wicked things, right? He says, he says, feet that feet that are swift run into mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies, he that soweth discord among brothers. Those are things that God hates. But God also hates divorce. You know, you loved her one time. Y'all got along one time. Go back and find out what it was that kept you like that. Okay. Go back to where you were and then make those things right. Because you know, when you have children and, and you and you and you and you marry somebody and they don't love the Lord and you love the Lord, you get ready to go to church, they're gonna stay home. And then you're gonna drag that baby to church. And then they're gonna say, Well, daddy, well, I gotta go to church. Mama, <laughs> mama don't go to church. No. You know, and it's just it's just better when you all are pulling toward the same thing and in the same direction. I'm trying to help you make an informed decision. Now, if this is not for you, this is just not for you. But you need to tell your children that before they get married. They don't need to find out out down the line. Somebody needs to tell them the truth. Matthew 19, 9, brother. Matthew 19, 9. You say, preacher, I don't like this sermon. Well, hey, all I know it is what it is. I just want everybody to be able to make an informed decision. And in Matthew 19, now, what does he say there, brother? And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, mm -hmm. except it be for fornication, mm -hmm. and shall marry another, 
Now, if that hadn't been in the cheating in there, you stay there. Well, I think, no, you need to know more of the thing. If there hadn't been an adultery in the fornication, you stay in there. And what did they say to that, brother? And whosoever married her which is put away from him the door. Okay. His disciples said unto him, if the, if the case of a man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. They said, well, I better just stay single. <laughs> now, now, look, 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 now, the people who say they're just going to stay single now, sex outside of marriage is it's it's sin. Yeah. Yes, it is. So if you don't stay single, that means you don't stay celibate. Right. You can't have your cake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what Brother Nash used to say? He said, he said, why buy the cow when well, you can get the milk for free? <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell you is that everybody can't do this, but if you can, then you got to do what God tells you to do. Right. It's according to your makeup. Some people just can't be celibate. <laughs> what else, brother? But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this same. Right. Save they to whom it is given. Uh huh. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their brother's womb. Right. And there are some eunuchs which are made eunuchs of men. Now some people, okay, okay, one more. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Those are the ones who say, I'm just going to hold myself. Because uh -huh. I'm trying to make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm trying to make it to heaven, and I'm not in a position to do that, anything else. I'm just going to, you make yourself a human. Mm -hmm. But I just want you to make an informed decision. Right. You say, Brother Jackson, I don't like that. I, didn't, I don't like it either. <laughs> but it is what it is. Amen. You know, we need to teach our children about celibacy. That's not a word in about a vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Abstain. Abstain and just wait. Nobody teach their children that anymore. And when you say that word, they say, Preacher, you crazy. You just don't have good sense, preacher. But that's the stuff we need to teach our children. Just wait, just wait. So, uh, one more thing I want to tell you. Well, I want you to have an informed decision. You want to be a new creature? You want to be a new creation? I want you to make an informed decision. Yes, the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Mm -hmm. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You look the same on the outside, but you don't talk the same. Right. And you don't dress the same. And you don't act the same. And you don't go around cussing people out. Mm -hmm. You don't go around lying on people. You, 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 you are a new creation. But I want you to count the cost. Right. I want you to realize that you have to make an informed decision. Because in order for you to be a new creation, you got to give up some of them old, old dog friends. Yeah. Those ones who are giving you advice and they don't even have anything to sell. And they try to give you some advice. Oh, child, I'll divorce them in a minute. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they, they never, they don't been married a hundred times. <laughs> you got to give up some of those friends. I'm trying to give you some advice so you can make an informed decision. Yes, if you're going to be a new creation, you can't be a friend of the world. Because right. the Bible said in James 4.4, 4, you adulteresses and adulteresses. You adulterer, <laughs> adulterers and adulteresses. No, you're not. That friendship with the world is in the new God. Yeah, okay, but preacher, you don't understand. I understand how the world <laughs> is. And I sympathize with the world and you are enemy with God. He said, well, preacher, you know, I don't think that homosexuality is wrong. Well, God says it's wrong. Right. Exactly. See, we're too much trying to figure out how to be a good friend and how to be, you know, you can't do it. All right. All right. You just can't do it. You either got to have to stand for God or not. I'm not saying hurt anybody. I'm just saying it can't work out both ways. That's wrong. You're right, baby. It's wrong. <laughs> All right, it goes on to say, uh, Whosoever therefore will make will be a friend of the world is an enemy with God. You can't have it both ways. You need to, you need to know where you stand with God. Mm -hmm. If you are going to be a new creature, you're going to have to get rid of your ego. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I got an ego. You got an ego. I'm somebody. You got to get rid of your ego. You say, well, I'm a, I'm a new creature, but I'm still somebody. Yeah. No, you know, we're nobody because Christ is somebody. Yeah. But in the church of Christ, everybody. 
is somebody in the church of Christ. But that's only because we're in Christ Jesus. And the Bible said in Matthew 16, 24, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him what? Deny himself. You know, when you start denying yourself, you're putting Christ first. He says, and take up your cross and follow me. For whosoever there will save his life shall lose it. Well, how can you save your life by losing it? Because you're giving, you're giving it all to Christ. You let Christ be in the driver's seat. You let him drive. You ever, had, you ever been on the passenger side when somebody else is driving? I bet you've never ridden with Brother Nash out. <laughs> yeah, brother. Now going a hundred miles an hour. It says, "Well, whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it." It's for what is a man profit if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You got to get rid of your ego. Well, you don't know who I am, preacher. You don't know what's on my wall. You see all my diplomas. So what? You're not going to take them diplomas up into heaven. I'm not saying don't get education. You should get all the education you can. But I'm saying don't put that in front of God because it's not going to stand. If we're going to be a new creation, we can't think we're going to be popular. You know, we want to we have all the views, right? <laughs> we want to have all the views. We want to have it. We want to be popular. You know, people will do anything to be popular. You ever watch some of them TikTok stuff or some of them YouTube? They have this thing that you have to sit on some milk crates or something. I don't know. Yeah. And everybody trying to get on top of the milk crates. They're breaking their neck because yeah. it's a challenge to do it. Yeah. Well, let me challenge you to come down this aisle and give me your hand and give Christ your yeah. heart. And say, I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Let me challenge you to do that. Because it's factual. You can't be popular. I can't be. You know who gets all the credit? Jesus does. And the Bible said in Matthew 5 10, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you. They say all men are evil against you, falsely for my name's sake. Right. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for, it is, for this is great as your reward in heaven. For, for so persecuted they the prophets which went before you. He right. said you're blessed when they talk about you. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know they, they chose me for jury duty, right? <laughs> I'm trying to get out of that thing. <laughs> and they asked me a question. They said, Jackson, you feel you can be impartial. With a, with, a, with a verdict and, and, and just look at the merits of the law. Yeah. I said, well, I don't know how to answer that. Yes. I said, because I filter everything through the word of God. Mm -hmm. My right and wrong, what the Bible says right and wrong. Yes, it might not be your right and wrong. Right. Yeah. They say, go on home, Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <we don't> need <laughs> there is only one right and wrong, and that's what God says. And the sooner we get that now, the better we will be. So you're not going to be popular. And in Luke 6, 26, brother, Luke 6, 26, what does he say there? Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Wait, now I want to be spoken well of, right? But if it costs you giving up God to be spoken well of, then you're in trouble. But as we live our life for Christ, people ought to see that. Yeah. And people ought to see we stand for something. Right. <laughs> if we're going to be a new creation in Christ, we might have to give up our family. Mm -hmm. We might have to give up some members of our family. Because they're going to say, what y'all doing down at that little old church down there with them little old people down there, that little old preacher down there? <laughs> uh, don't you see that big building over there? Don't you see what they're doing over there? They're doing all this stuff there. You might have to lose some of your family. Right. And the Bible said in Luke 14, 25, and there went a great multitude with him, and he turned and said unto them, if any man come after me and hate not his father, his mother, his wife, his children, his brother, his sister, yeah, even his own life, cannot he be my disciple. You can't let what your, your family think comes above God. Because it's going to come a time when they're going to say, you don't need to do that. You know, you know, you know how many people this COVID has knocked out of the church. So many people have stopped. They're stopping from going to work now. 
It didn't stop him from traveling all across the world now. It didn't stop him from going to these sports. Did you see the game just there? So many people, 70,000, 80,000 people in the city. It just, but don't ask him to go to church all Sunday because he's got to have that mask on. There's too many people in there. I'm telling you, we got to be careful. Our family could cause us to fall. We're supposed to influence them. They don't supposed to influence us. You go around, I'm talking about it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Your family's not going to be with you. You go and stand up for the Lord and see how popular you are. You know what he said in 1 Corinthians 12, 13? For by one spirit where we all baptize into one body. That means it's one church. One body equals one church. You think you're going to be popular? You think your family members are going to love you when you say that? Amen. And all we got to do is remain in the doctrine of Christ. Whosoever transgresses in the body is not in the doctrine of Christ. Hey, I'm not God. You got to do what God tell you to do. Amen. That's the only way it's going to make you right. You say, well, I, I think I think it's up. You think whatever you want to think, but the Bible is clear. It's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. He said in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by, by one spirit, where we all baptize into one body, whether you be Jew, whether you be Gentile, whether you be born, whether you be free, you all made to drink, made to drink of one spirit. Whether you're male or female, whether you're Democrat or Republican, whether you're from the north or from the south, we're all in one body. That's not gonna make you popular, but guess what you are? You're a new creation. You look the same on the outside. But we stand for something now, brother. Uh -huh. yeah. We stand for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. And we ought not to be ashamed to say that. Yeah. You know, brother, my brother McAllister was telling us when he was in his class, he was in this, uh, his, his, I don't know, he went to some big time college. And he was in his class, and they wanted to some, know something personal. And he said, I believe my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is king. And yes. people in there laughed. Ha! <laughs> you They'll laugh last. Yeah. God will laugh last. Yeah. You know what he said in 1 Corinthians 12, 19? For at, if there were, and if they were all one members, were where were the one? one, one, one. Brother Williams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ever been tongue tied? <laughs> <laughs> and if they were all one member, uh, where were the body? What, I, I won't, what does that verse 18 say? But now have God set the members, every one of them, in the body, uh -huh. as it has pleased him. Uh -huh. And if they were all one member, where was the body? Uh -huh. But now are they many members, yet but one body. That's what I want. What verse is that? 20? Verse 20. There are many members, but yet one body. One body. We all work together. You know that? Yeah. You got that one body. Your hand doesn't work unless your head tells your hand to move. Right. Your feet, don't, we all work together in the body of Christ. But there's only one head. Yes. You know who that is? Yes. James Thomas. Right. No. Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we all in one body. Right. That's the doctrine of Christ. So I'm just trying to get you to make an informed decision. If you want to become a Christian, that's fine. God wants you to become a Christian. But he wants you to know you can't play around now. He wants you to know that the latter end can be worse than the first. Because once you walk out and think it's no big deal, Satan makes you harder and harder and harder. And Satan makes it so easy for you to do whatever you want to do. And you're going to think it's all right. Well, I have left the church, but I have left the Lord. You left the Lord. Amen. Well, I don't really need my Bible. You need your Bible. Yes. But I don't need them brothers and sisters dying there because they get on my... You need one another. God is the one that put us together. Why do you think he did that? So we can encourage one another. We can provoke one another to good works. Every Sunday when we come together, somebody needs something from somebody, from some one of you. We need some kind of encouragement. We need something. We need something. Because we got to keep on keeping. Oh, yeah, you got the captain calls to be informed when it comes to marriage. If you don't want to get married, that's fine. But don't make a decision that you're going to regret because God holds us accountable. So I want you to make an informed decision. If you want to be a new creation in Christ, that's fine. But all that popularity and your ego and all of this stuff that makes you different, it makes you somebody, and it makes you elevate yourself above everybody else, 
You got to put that stuff on the back shelf. Right. Because the Bible said it's all about Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's got to be about. It has to be about Christ yes, Jesus. Sir. So maybe there's someone here today. Say, well, I don't want to make an informed decision, Brother Jackson. I see what you're saying. Well, you have to hear his word, Romans 10, 17. And then you have to believe what he says, Hebrews 11, 6. And then, you know, you're going to have to repent. Luke 13, 3, I tell you, and they accept you repent, you shall all thy lives for perish. You don't have to confess with your mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You're going to have to be baptized for the remission of your sins. You can't get baptized and go and do something else because there's only one body, there's only one doctrine, there's only one way of God of thinking, and God says you got to maintain that way of thinking. Yeah. You can't do your own thing and be right with God. Baptism works when you talk right and baptize right. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you just got away. Yeah. So I want you today to make an informed decision. God told them, look, okay, you want a king? I'll give you a king. But he's going to beat you. He's going to treat you bad. He's going to have your, serve, your children running in front of the church. He's going to do you wrong. You still want the king? Yeah. <laughs> and they got it. And God said, when you start crying, don't come to me. Don't look to me for help, because I told you up front what was going to be. I'm asking you today to make an informed decision, because there's only one way that's right, and that's through Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to come down this aisle and give me your hand, give Christ your heart. And say, I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, Brother Jackson. And I know it's not going to be the easiest life, but it's the best life. And I know when it's all said and done, I'm going to have a home with Jesus in heaven. Because anything worth working, Anything worth having is worth working for. Yes, sir. You can go ahead on and take the easy way all you want. There's two gates. There's a broad way and a narrow way. The broad way is easy. You do what you want to do and live how you want to live. But down at the end of that way is damnation. But the narrow way is tight and, and hard to get there. But if you go through that narrow way, the end is salvation. You choose which way you want to go. Come down this aisle and give me your hand give Christ y'all. I want you to make an informed decision today. As together we stand the same. This life is filled with sorrow and trouble below. We are part of By the authority of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I baptize this repentant believer in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit for the remission of sin. Amen. Amen. Amen.